A while back, I told you a little story. It was about a man named John. And if you have seen my review, or anyone's review, of the magnificent EMP EDC Nimble, then you will already know that that story most definitely had a happy ending. Well, after experiencing just how mind-blowingly good the Nimble was, and, well, still is, I really didn't see how it was possible to follow it up. A at all. And well, my knife-loving friends, I'm here to tell you about John's sophomore effort. The sophomore effort that I didn't think was possible. And this, this is it. And the follow-up to the Nimble most definitely does not disappoint. This is the EMP EDC Thick Boy. That's right, you heard me correctly. Now, unlike the Nimble, this design is actually being produced by the good folks at Best Tech Knives, and if you followed the channel for any amount of time, you will know that I love me some Best Tech Knives. Visually speaking, it couldn't be more different from its older and much smaller brother. Other than the pocket clip and that big dugout EMP EDC style deployment slot on the blade, there isn't much in the way of shared design elements. And don't let the name scare you away, even if you have tiny mitts like me, the Thick Boy here is actually a relatively reasonably sized and extremely carryable piece. Lengthwise and weightwise, it doesn't even come close to being unwieldy or outrageous by any means. Yes, we do have that massive cleaver sticking proudly out of the handles when closed, making this a relatively tall knife, but all in all, not that thick and, well, not that heavy. This variant... I have here, which is a prototype that was generously lent to me by the man himself, thank you so much, is the black micarta with the stonewash blade, and I think it's a great look. Kind of old West Revolver aesthetic on the handle. We've also got very minimal hardware on this piece, and what hardware there is, well guess what? It's all T8. Praise Allah. Now this piece is, or was, or will continue to be a pre-order. Unfortunately, I was not able to get this review done before the pre-order started. You know, I was a little busy getting married and getting robbed and getting my car crashed into. Oh, yeah, normal stuff. Normal stuff. But there will be more of these, and it is available in a nice array of excellent colorways and options. I personally ended up pre-ordering it for myself. I picked it up in the natural micarta with the stonewash blade, and scrolling through the options list, I, you're not going to find a single one that doesn't, you know, hit you in all the right ways. You know what I mean? I just love the looks of all of the variants available. Just a sea of clean and classy titanium and micarta to meet anyone's particular tastes. Opening this thing up and that namesake, well, it kind of starts to make sense. This big, gnarly, cleaver-style blade made of S35EN makes one hell of a statement. But as big and as wild as it looks size-wise, again, very reasonable. Coming in right around three inches long. And just look, just look at the size of the freaking finger choil. It's, it is ridiculous. We've also got all kinds of jimping, both on the blade spine and on that big backspacer at the tail end. Aesthetically, this big beautiful titanium bolster lock is as stylish and clean as it is absolutely insane looking. And I, for one, am I'm a really big fan. Now then, moving on to the Urgos, and in the hand, this thing just feels, oh, it feels so right. We get loads of extra grippiness and traction from the slight texturing on the micarta paired with the well-finished jimping on the backspacer and along the blade spine. And there's a nice subtle contouring on the handles, which I, I always like to see, especially on a bigger knife. The pocket clip is big and wild looking, but like the Nimble, it just melts into the palm. And Best Tech has just done a fantastic job with fit and finish, knocking down every edge or any potential hotspot. Choking up with that massive finger choil, it just feels so good, it feels so right, and it gives you more than enough control to wield that worn cleaver with authority and unquestionable ease. All grips, pretty much any size hands. The thick boy here, it's right at home, in the hand, being used. Excellent ergos, top to bottom. And going back to that outrageous looking worn cleaver at the business end, like I said before, this is S35EN, which is a fine steel and still falls within that super steel category, for now at least. Good rust resistance, solid edge retention, and before this thing arrived, just from the pictures I had seen, I have to admit I wasn't sure how good the cutting performance would be. Visually, it just doesn't look like a slicey AF death machine, you know what I mean? But oh boy, was I friggin wrong. The blade stock is not outrageously thick, and because that blade is so tall, the flat grind, which is not a full flat grind, kind of a 60-40 kind of ratio going on, the flat grind brings that blade all the way down to an exceptionally thin edge. And oh, it's so slicey. 
the, the final cutting edge is just stupid slicey. And this thing, it just blew my tits clean off when I made that first cut, taking it straight out of the box. An absolute destroyer of cardboard and junk mail and anything and everything you can get your hands on. It just eats it all up and begs for more. I just, I really am impressed and obsessed with how well this blade has been done. It's amazing stuff. A plus. And finally, the action. Well, if you have seen anything on the Nimble, you will know that we here on Knife YouTube have just been blown away by the Nimble's insanely great action. But Fidgeting Bliss, it must be in John's EMP EDC business plan because the action on the Thick Boy here is equally as insane as the Nimble. I mean, after all, we have a wildly heavy blade running on some buttery smooth bearings, and that, my friends, can only mean one thing. One of the most terrifying, fingertip-eating, adrenaline-pumping, guillotine drop-shot actions that I have personally ever experienced. And on the open, spidey flicks and thumb flicks are good and snappy, nice and satisfying, thanks to an impressively well-dialed-in D10. One of the best, honestly, that I've experienced on a best tech made knife ever. I think the, the closest thing I can compare it to is the exploit. It's got some solid... I think that might be the only one that's better than this. But this is a close freaking second. I've had this thing for a couple weeks now, and I just carry it every day, all day. It just, it has been an orgasmic experience to sit and fidget with this piece for hours and hours and hours at work, in the car, at my own wedding, during funerals, everywhere, and all the damn time. It has probably bit me three or four times, pretty damn good, but I just, I don't care. I can't put it away. No matter how much blood it draws, as soon as that, as soon as that lock bar is out of the way, you had better get everything else the fuck out of the way as well, because that cleaver comes down and slams back into place immediately, without question, without fail. So smooth, so good. It's a knockout home run action once again. John, well done. So, there you have it. Definitely not my longest review, but God, it's just... How many good things can you say about a knife? The second original design from John at EMPEDC, and somehow, some way, he has just knocked it out of the park again. Two for freaking two. The looks and the styling are classic and old school, and they're also absolutely buck wild. Now, given this this knife is not going to be for everybody, it's going to be divisive. Either you you love it and you gotta have it, or it's a meh, whatever. Move on. But me, I, I for one fall into the previous of the two categories, the materials and the build quality from Best Tech is some of the best I've seen from them. The blade just melts anything and everything it touches, and the action is enough to send a man running for a cold shower. A really impressive piece top to bottom. Pricing-wise, also, to me at least, a little pretty impressive. Pre-orders were running at 310 bucks. Now, I'm not sure if that price will go up after this first pre-order, but I'm okay with the price. I really am. Based simply on the quality and the sheer amount of high-end materials that go into this piece, like, Dude, John, you need to slow it down, man. You keep up this kind of pace, and I'm going to have to get a reverse mortgage on the house just so I can afford to keep buying your knives. It's a great piece from an amazing dude. John is just one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, and I am, I'm really just overwhelmed at the thought of what he could possibly have in store for us in the very near future. <sighs> so, until next time, thank you for watching. Bye-bye now.